Good morning, my friends. It is good to be gathered together today on this absolutely gorgeous November morning. It is so good to see you all here and so good to gather for worship. A few announcements before we get started. Uh, we have hopefully next week we'll be able to worship outside and then that will be our last outside worship service uh, for the year. Um, hopefully we'll be able to jump right back into it uh, as soon as it warms up. But uh, we will be going online exclusively uh, starting November 22nd. Now, I have a plan for uh, communion during our time that we are worshiping online only. We are uh, consecrating additional uh, cups and um, uh, communion packets 
today and we will be hopefully distributing them. Uh, this, Carol, are we set up to give some out today or not? No bags. Okay. So next week, um, I'll be putting out an, <clears throat> a notice that you can come and uh, pick up a month's supply of communion so that you can take communion during the worship service while you're watching online. Um, so uh, strange times call for strange and unusual measures. <laughs> and this is one of those things. Um, but so uh, we'll be figuring that out and uh, and I'll be letting you know you can pick up uh, your elements for uh, the coming month and then we'll do that several times through the winter until we're back together again in person. Uh, I think that that will allow more people to commune. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, let's see. Advent is approaching and there will be a lot of things happening for Advent um, with uh, uh, Wednesday, midweek Wednesday services online and things to do with your family, things to do at home and things to do together, uh, not in person, but together from a distance. Uh, and so um, be ready for that. And I believe that that is all I have by way of announcements. Does anyone have announcements that they would like to make or reminders for me? Something that I should have said but haven't. Anyone? All right. Very good. Then let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Brothers and sisters, let's take a deep breath. Breathe in the Spirit of God and prepare to be fed by God's Word uh, and prepared to uh, love one another. All right. Thank you.
to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned. We have sinned. We pass judgment on one another before, before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Amen. Let us join in our gathering hymn, Come, We That Love the Lord. Spirit be with you all and also with you. <clears throat> Lord, help 
Please join in our hymn of praise. <clears throat> justice and love. You illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning. The first reading comes from the book of Amos, Amos 5, uh, 18 through 24. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. It is not the, is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confounded. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, aha, and gloat over me, turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer, O Lord. Do not tarry. The second reading comes from the first book of Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus rose and died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, 
that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will be by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call and the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> if you are able and you desire, please rise for the gospel. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five of them were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here comes, here is the bridegroom, come and meet him. Then all of those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no. There will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore. For you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. Be seated. <clears throat> Grace to you and peace from the God in whom we live and move and have our very being. I'll tell you what, the parable of the ten bridesmaids is to me an incredibly disturbing parable. <laughs> I don't know how you feel about it, but wow. Well, it fits really well into its context because all of Matthew 24 and 25 is kind of disturbing, really. Jesus is nearing the end of his life here on earth. His ministry is coming to a close, a close, and he has been teaching us about discipleship for all of these chapters, all through his ministry. He's been teaching us about what it means to be a child of God, telling us what it means to follow him. And now we're nearing near the end of his time of teaching, and he is really laying it on the line here. These chapters are about judgment. He's asking, are you in or are you out? 
The kingdom of heaven will be like this, he says. Now in this parable, I am trying to figure out which part is like the kingdom of heaven. I I'm not really sure how to take it, except to accept this, except to say that waiting is hard. And waiting well is harder, especially when the waiting goes on and on and on and on for a very long time. Here we are in these last few weeks of the church year. And the texts that we have point us to the end times. This week, next week, the week after. These end timed, end times texts are before us. And we Lutheran Christians that usually don't talk much about the end times are faced with these words of Jesus and we need to take them seriously. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Jesus is using the future tense here. He wants us to be prepared for what is to come. And I point this out only because usually when we talk about the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, I emphasize to you how Jesus is encouraging us to live in a kingdom way now and here. Live with God as your king now here and you are presently living in God's reign. That's how we usually talk about it. But in this text, Jesus is preparing us for something in the future. And he wants us to be ready. Jesus wants us to live in a state of readiness, prepared for the business of the reign of God. Perhaps he was preparing his disciples specifically for what was to come for them. Within the context, Jesus and his disciples have left the temple where he was teaching a larger crowd. And he was also facing the opposition of the scribes and the Pharisees. He's had a lot to say to them in these last few chapters. But now they've left the temple. And he's alone with his disciples. And his disciples have asked him about the things that are to come. The destruction of the temple that he foretold. And the coming age. And Jesus is teaching them about making their way through the coming age. As they wait for his return. Now, I'm not sure exactly what they thought that meant. But they knew that they were waiting for the day when all would be made right. That was what the Old Testament prophets foretold. And that's what they're waiting for. And Jesus warns them. There will be great struggles and persecutions and false prophets and leaders that will lead people astray. And through all of this, you must wait prepared with oil in your lamp. Because, my friends, remember the Sermon on the Mount? Remember? You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You are the ones who hunger and thirst for righteousness. You are the ones who show mercy. And in doing so, you shine the light of God into the dark places and into the dark times. This is who you are. And so, friends, 
This is the time. This is the time to be salt and light in the world. We are in the midst of truly turbulent times. Many are fearful of what is ahead. But we know that there is no need to fear because the kingdom of God is at hand. And we are the ones that are to shine the light. The thing is, sometimes, sometimes the wait is so long. Sometimes the struggles go on longer than we expect. We need to be in it for the long haul, brothers and sisters. Remember those bridesmaids who thought they were ready, but they didn't realize how long they would be waiting. Or, who knows, maybe they burned their lamps too bright and they used up their oil too fast. We don't know. But we do know that their oil didn't last and they didn't have reserves and they left their post by the time the bridegroom appeared. The bridegroom's words to them are harsh and unforgiving. And that doesn't sound much like Jesus to me. But I think that Jesus wants to drive this point home. Are you able to be a light in the world? Are you willing to do justice in the world? Are you actively hungering and thirsting for righteousness in your life? Is your light burning bright so that people around you can see your love for your neighbor? Is your light burning bright so that people can see your commitment to follow Jesus in compassion and mercy? Is your light burning bright so that people around you know mercy rather than judgment? That's a lot to ask. That's a lot of light. Are you able? Brothers and sisters, you are able. I know that because we are empowered by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit has breathed into you. You are able, but you might need to take care. Keep your oil stocked. In this case, that means keep your fire fed with the word of God and with the fellowship of the saints. Keep yourself fed. Take care of yourself. My friends, these days are hard. And how can you be a light in the world if you are feeling depleted and dark yourself? Reach out to friends. Breathe in the Spirit of God. Fill your head with the messages of love from God. This is the oil that will keep your light burning. And keep your wick trimmed. Hold yourself accountable. And when you find that your lamp is getting smoky, you might need to clean out some soot from the globe of your lamp. You might need to trim the wick a bit. It's easy to get caught up in the negativity that is around us. Just stop. Refuse to participate in the name calling. Refuse to participate in the spreading of lies. And when you mess up, confess your sin. Remember your baptism. Breathe in the spirit. And try again. Brothers and sisters, you are the light of the world. In this dark time, we are called to the ministry of reconciliation. We are called to proclaim the gospel of forgiveness and resurrection, new life. In this time when the map of our country is red and blue and we are defined, we are tempted to define ourselves as red or blue, remember that it is our baptism that defines us. We belong to Christ. 
That is who we are. And in this time when it is so easy to focus on the things that divide us, remember that it is the gospel that unifies us. You are the light of the world. The light. Fill your lamp. Trim your wick. Clean that soot out of the glass. And be the light that God calls us to be. And let's let justice roll down like water and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Amen. Let us join in singing our hymn of the day. Stand if you are able. <clears throat> Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer, especially Grace and Lydia and Sam. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. great. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world that you have made. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, and artists whose work invites us into harmonious living with your creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Reign over the courtrooms of every land, in the hearts of those who guard the law and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Hear us, O God. 
Your mercy is great. Gracious God, we pray for our nation. Bring healing, O God, bring justice. Help us to live in righteousness, striving, hungering, thirsting for righteousness. Help us to love one another. Help us to mend the souls of those who are weary and lift up the brokenhearted. Bring peace to those who fear. Bring humility to those who need it. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy and immortal one, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives. Inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please share the peace of Christ with one another. Share in gestures of peace, in signs of love, in messages of love and peace. Reach out to one another, love one another, care for one another. Brothers and sisters, we are the light. Let us bring peace to this world. Remember, as a part of your stewardship, um, remember your churches and uh, bring your offering if you are able. Uh, bring your offering to those organizations that uh, we seek to serve. We also have um, our box out reminding us about our uh, food drive. Uh, the JCCM is in need of food for the food bank. So if you, um, if you are able and you would like to donate to the food bank, you can bring your food to worship next week or you can bring it to the parish house, um, leave it there, and, uh, and it will be brought to JCCM. So um, participate in, in good stewardship and, and uh, share what you have with those who, uh, who need it most. With that, let us uh, join in our offertory response. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with, these rich, with this rich food and drink, and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give to thanks, thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Long, long ago in Jerusalem, as the scriptures do record, Isaiah to the temple came to see the Holy Lord. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of throne 
Once at the mighty Lord, robes blowing through the hall, while six winged angels flew above, Isaiah heard them call. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, God's glory is the whole earth, God of power and might. Oh, what a sight it was to see, and oh, what a sound to hear, the temple door post shook and quaked, and smoke was in the air. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet table where Christ gives himself as food and drink.
Brothers and sisters, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard, to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. For all that God can do within us and for all that God can do without us, thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. For all in whom Christ lived before us, for all in whom Christ lives beside us, thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. For all that the Spirit wants to bring us, for where the Spirit wants to send us, thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. The blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you. Uh, be with you and on your way together now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us join in our closing hymn, When Peace Like a River.
Go in peace, brothers and sisters. Love and serve God and God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.